Hey there everybody, Niggeroth here, bringing you a brand new LP for the recently fan-translated Echo Knight 2 The Lord of Nightmares. We're gonna go ahead and start a brand new game and see what this ghostly tale holds in store for us. いくら特別室は一般の出入りが禁じられてるからって夜中に忍び込むなんてお前の大胆さには呆れるよま職員だからって俺みたいな下っ端じゃな他に何ができるわけでもないんだが And with a little help from our good friend Kent, we have been given after hours access to the university library in the hopes that maybe we might be able to uncover some clues that the police managed to overlook in the case of our RRPing character's currently missing girlfriend. For the most part, though, everything seems pretty... well, dead quiet here in the library. It's actually a little bit disquieting, but... we really shouldn't have that stop our main character. He is kind of accustomed to uncomfortable situations because... Believe it or not, we are still playing as Richard Osman from the first game. Now, while he is the same, there have been some improvements from the first game, especially UI-wise, because... Well, first thing, we actually have a pretty usable map here. It's a, it's a pretty great improvement over the first game. We also have, an, well, I guess a replacement for the leather organizer in the form of, well, just the memo pad here. And it's got pretty much the standard information that you could get from the first game. And finally, we're not going to worry about the special option just yet. But we'll be, we will be taking a look at that later on. But well, for right now, I guess we should start looking around for clues, though... Man, nothing really here but a bunch of books. Though, oddly enough... Each one of these bookcases does have its own individual little flavor text on it. It's just that from software level of attention that is pretty surprising. Also, it shows off another nice addition to the game and the fact that whenever there is something you can investigate, the game is nice enough to tell you just what it is, but... Yeah, what we really want to investigate is this... Well, it looks like a file here at the top of the bookcase, but it's a little bit out of reach. That's why, as in pretty much the first game, sometimes you can move lighter objects, such as the steps tool here. 
And you can use these to get to higher elevations. But let's go ahead and see what this file is. Ah, it is a log of people that managed to go into this room, and it does indeed appear that Christina was in here looking at a... Well, looking at the history section. And I think that sound was indeed coming from there. don't really remember this book being here on the ground, though.目が覚めたか。そんなに難しい顔するなよ。一応命の恩人なんだぜ。森で気を失ってたところを拾ってやったんだ。感謝ぐらいしてくれ。まあ、これもあそこで道に迷ってたからな。偉そうなことは言えない
seems, though, that he is a visitor much like ourselves to the mansion, and... Well, it doesn't seem like he's going to be much help in f helping us find Catherine. Still, though, we might as well go ahead and press on. もう体の方はいいのかとにかくこう暗いんじゃどうしようもないなその辺を見てこよう電気ぐらいなんとかなるだろう And it seems that Brian is just full of great ideas. First one being that before we leave, we should probably start collecting some items such as this handy dandy lighter. Because as he did mention, it is pretty dark in here, so... It'll be nice to be able to light candles if we come across them, but in addition to that, in the drawer here in the dresser, you'll find a brand new item. A collection of dried herbs. Now, these might not have an apparent usage, but if we go ahead and go to our inventory screen, it'll give us a quick indication about just what these are used for, and... These are our, well, starting healing item. Yeah, replacing the curing potions. And I guess the holy water. We're going to have some more, I guess, conventional means to heal ourselves for now. And while there are a few other things to explore in here, they're really not going to be of any use to us. So let's go ahead and see if we can't turn on the power because... Yeah. We are definitely going to want to have these lights on. But the mansion, at least initially here, seems to be a little bit, well, out of date. I think the, uh, the HUD there mentioned that we were almost in the 1950s, and... Well, I get the feeling that large indoor fireplaces or furnaces like that one are not really of the times. But we've already stumbled across Brian, who seems to have found something interesting. Certainly is an odd way to manage your power, but well, it does give us even more of an opportunity to start exploring, but it seems something that Brian has something else to offer us. That certainly might come in handy in the darkness. But with no real indication, let's... Well, let's just start with this first door here. Yeah, as you can imagine, the mansion is pretty spacious and is a lot larger space than the Orpheus. Still, it does manage to have its own collection of interesting art. But even in the darkness here, the, uh, the eagle-eyed viewer might be able to spot an item on the table here. Though it is a little bit hard to highlight. 
Another nice set of healing herbs. But even more than that, the game, well, the sequel here does manage to, I guess, uh, vary up the lighting options just a little bit. Instead of just light switches on the door, we have light switches on upper fixtures and even lamps here and there that we can possibly turn on, though. Well, before we get to that, we still have to fix the power, but there, there is this one other oddity here. For some reason, they felt the need to specifically name the flower in this vase. Not sure if it has some deeper meaning, but who knows, maybe we can find out about that later. Still, something about this hallway might seem a little bit familiar. And that's because this was where we were flying along in that dream. And I seem to recall there was a pretty gruesome scene that happened just on the other side of these double doors. And it's at this point that we realize that the mansion overall has been pretty quiet, but we get a nice little taste of the From Software audio work as we head out onto this stone passageway, and greeted by some rather odd facial doors. But things take a sudden turn for the ultra-weird in the Clancy Mansion as we happen across what appears to be a glass coffin with a woman that appears to have a very striking resemblance to our girlfriend Christina. I guess this could very well be the person that was in that book that we found in the library, but it still doesn't really seem a normal... Normal way to store a dead body. Especially surrounded by all these arcane symbols and... what appears to be a picture of the moon in the ceiling. Yeah, this just brings up a whole lot of questions about what the Clancy family might have been into or what's really in store for us, but... still really doesn't help us with fixing the power at all. I guess it's just something to keep in mind in the future. Continuing our search through the available doors, I guess the next one is going to be up here on the left-hand side. Strange, too. Why? Something locked inside the cupboard here? Definitely seems like that might be the case, but yeah, a little closer look at the door, so it shows that there's a lock, so I guess that's going to have to be a key we're going to be on the lookout for, but something else of interest is this Extremely large glass aquarium here. I can only imagine this must have been pretty impressive when it was filled with water and aquatic life. It's 
still, though, that must have been quite some time ago. It's pretty dry in there now. But, well, now that we have a lighter in hand, maybe we can shed a little bit of light on this room by lighting up this candle. And it shows that something wasn't trying to get out of the cupboard, but into it instead. So, just like in the first Echo Night, sometimes Richard will be tasked with heading into a ghost pass to see if he can't possibly, well, lend them a little bit of assistance. And considering that this is going to be our first trip into the past, we are given a pretty simple task to fulfill. We just have to help this young boy, well, to feed his very lively fish here. It's now we do know in the present day that this cabinet is indeed locked, because that was invariably what caused us to head into the past here, but in the past... Yeah, the cabinet is completely unlocked, allowing us easy access to this... Well, very modern-looking box of fish food. And that means our, our task is pretty much already complete. We just need to hand it off. Arigato. こいつね、頭がいいんだ。僕がやらないと餌を食べないんだよ。And while that does feed the fish now, it doesn't really seem to solve the problem of what's going to stop the cabinet from being locked in the future. I mean, once we place the food back in here, it seems like the, the present is just going to happen again. That's right. If you But we have been given a very nice key. And with this, we might be able to fulfill this young ghost's final wish. Ah, 
餌、餌、餌、あった。よかったお兄ちゃんありがとう魚元気になったよあなたいい人なのね<笑>そう構えなくてもいいわ何もしないから。あれはあの男の子だったのよあの子の魂死んじゃったのみんなねでもどこにも行けない誰かが来てくれるのでもう死んじゃったのにかわいそうよね助けてあげる<笑>できるかしらねに降りて西そこに小さな庭があるわあの子を殺したやつはそこにいるはずよはい。Seems to be doing pretty well, all in all, but. Yeah, for saving that young boy's ghost. We do manage to get another returning item from the first game, the astral piece. But even more than that, well, the eagle eyed viewer might have noticed that something dropped out of the fish food. And it is the exact key that we've been looking for all this time to turn back on the power. I'm sure Brian will be super happy to hear about that. And, hell, maybe we can even tell him about the fact that this place is really, really haunted. I'm sure he'll just be. Super ecstatic to hear about that. Kagi ga mitsukatta no ka? Datta ra hayaku koitsu o ngogashite kure. So, operating the distribution panel is a pretty simplistic task. We just need to put the key in and turn it on. おいなんだよあれどけチューナーこいつ一体うわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわうわ Because, much like in the first game, there are occasionally going to be some hostile ghosts that we have to deal with, and the only surefire way to drive them away is with some light. Now, while it doesn't seem like the best idea, we are pretty much done in this area, so we do want to go ahead and take back the distribution key here. And 
And while it does turn off the lights... Well, we kind of want to follow Brian because he does have the best idea in this situation. Which is just to get out of this mansion, mansion as quickly as possible. But there is one final door that we want to go ahead and pop our head into. It's a very spacious, albeit very, very leaky bathroom, but we only want to pop in here very quick because there is another dried herb for us to pick up. But we don't want to linger. Because now that we have turned on the power, this young girl ghost is going to be harassing us pretty much unendingly. Which is, which is why it's pretty much... Uh, Brian had the best idea here. We can probably come back when it's daylight to find Christina. That we don't really have much time to mourn the loss of Brian, because that young girl ghost is right on our tail, and if this is your first time playing, well, you're gonna be pretty lost in finding the light switch because it's nestled all the way down here underneath the stairs. But if you're quick on your feet, you can manage to evade the, the ghost pretty easily. But yeah, things have quickly gone from bad to worse here in this mansion. I mean, I think this is probably the first time we've we've been fully privy to a murder of a real-life human being in the game. Still, though, I I kind of have to wonder why Brian was packing a gun in the first place. I mean, he was out here in the middle of nowhere, seemingly by coincidence, and... Yeah, but... He did manage to leave behind an item we can actually use, which is the compass. Should come in handy, but... Well, I think for right now, we have a lot of things to try to figure out. A lot of, a lot of questions to answer, but... I guess we'll have to do that next time, as we continue to explore the Clancy Mansion. See you then.